the On The Groove. We're here with uh, Mike from Yob. Thanks for doing this, Mike. Totally. So, what made you do all of this? Is there any particular record that you, uh, you know, made you decide that you want to strap on a guitar and make your living at it? Um, yeah, the living part's a question, but uh, definitely just to play. Um, I mean, I was brought up with, you know, 70s radio, so I mean, uh, and my folks spun everything from Zeppelin to Doobie Brothers, uh, Elton John, Crosby, Stills, Nash, Neil Young, and so I mean, I was very much into music. When I was probably 12 is when I got turned on to Maiden and uh, Priest, uh, also Dead Kennedys, and um, uh, and so a lot of that punk and metal got me really excited too. I tried to take guitar lessons, but I was horrible at it, and uh, I quit. Um, and it wasn't until I was probably 15, I had some buddies that played in a punk band, and um, they blew my mind, because I'd never been that close to music, and so when they were playing, that's when I decided that I had to play. It was actually watching them play. So in terms of vinyl sales, uh, and other merch, of course, how much does that figure into um, keeping you guys on the road on this and making the next record? How much does vinyl sales come into the picture and merch? Quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, at least half of what we do is vinyl and merch sales, if not more. So let's say, I mean, you're telling me, let's say, full merch table, right? Caps, stickers, all the rest of this. Half of that is fully vinyl? Uh, easily. As a kid, do you remember the first record you bought with your own money? Uh, Elton John, Single Man. Well, going through my parents' records, um, I loved, uh, my mother had a lot of Elton John records, and so I spun those a lot, and uh, the Greatest Hits album it was probably what I spun the most, and um, so when I was able to go out and buy my own record, that was the brand new Elton John album, and that was the one that I wanted to get. So. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't really, you know, my folks weren't into Black Sabbath or anything like that. Like, then the heaviest thing that we listened to was Led Zeppelin. Um, okay. So I discovered Sabbath more kind of on my own. This whole vinyl thing, does it surprise you? Um, you know, I think a lot of people are a little surprised by it, the resurgence and how powerful it is, but it's also, um, it's not like, I mean, I'd be more surprised if it was eight tracks, right? Because it's sure. like functionally more difficult medium where vinyl is, uh, you know, there's a lot of things about it that are desirable. For well, I mean, I think we start out really with the idea of it making sure that it looks good on vinyl first. Because then, you know, from CD to anything you else, make it, it, works, it works fine. So yeah, I think vinyl's um, more the consideration to begin with. Hi. Indie versus major labels. I ask this very specifically because Yob was a band that's part of a scene and all of a sudden you've become a band that's become mentioned on Pitchfork even. Is there still a difference in the versus major for an artist that potentially could cross over and sign a contract with a major label like Mastodon did for example? I, th I think we're a much more difficult listen than um, maybe majors would be into. Um, we haven't been courted by anybody like that. Um, and even with Pitchfork and the Rolling Stone stuff, we still haven't been approached in that way. And, um, you know, I don't give it a lot of consideration. I don't have a lot of personal experience myself. I have friends who have had personal experiences. Um, positive and negative, um, people that have been screwed, but you can get screwed by an indie too. Um, you can. So it's, uh, it's just a matter of, um, obviously the more money someone's spending on you, the more that they feel like they can tell you what to do with your art and what to do with your touring and what to do um, to sell your record for them. And so I think with majors, maybe that's more of an issue um, than it is with indies. but. With indies too, it just depends on the scenario, but I think in either scenario, nobody gets screwed by a deal they didn't sign. It definitely feels like a really big leap that we're not exactly ambitious towards. We're not a, as easy of a listen as Mastodon. Or, um, I think in this day and age, certainly the pie in the sky is a much more unrealistic goal than it's ever been. Um, 40 years ago, I mean, if we'd been written up in Rolling Stone the way we just were, we could have been superstars. And today, 
it's it's an interesting kind of surprise and a nod, but it's not changing our reality much. We're still doing what we're doing. We're still on our own terms. We're not being courted by labels or majors left and right or anything like that. And so, um, and we're we're content with that. We're grateful for it, and we're also inherently just skeptical of it too. Um, and you know, we just need to. We just and what it makes us think is that we need to just keep doing what we're doing. In your opinion, what makes a great album, a perfect album, a, a, a classic? Um, there's just there has to be a soul that lives in the album that, from beginning to end, has this ebb and flow and consistency and feeling. Because great riffs, great players. Um, I mean, that's part of it, but that's not it. Um, a great player doesn't necessarily get to be on a great record. Um, and great riffs don't necessarily make great songs. Um, there's something in there that's the personal moment, magical moment in time, the, the individuals that are involved that bring something to it that is bigger than the mathematics of the riffs or the counts or the shifts. Have you ever taken a chance on a record that you knew nothing about? Uh, used to all the time, way before the internet age, where you just went into record stores and it was either something that they were spinning in the store um, or something that you read about in a magazine and you had no opportunity to hear it, or you were looking at the artwork and you're going, well, this looks really cool. I'm going to check it out. And I took a risk on the first Sabbath record, History of a Time to Come, and I just, I liked the label. And I knew the label put out things that I liked, so I took a chance on it. Sabbath as in Sabbath. Sabbath. Yeah, that's right. Gotcha. The, the UK. Sure. The UK Sabbath. Is Rock and Roll dead? No. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You know, no matter how jaded t this time gets, there will always be room for a truly great rock and roll band. And they do not have to reinvent the wheel in any way. They just have to bring the vitality and dangerousness of life and music, and it will capture people's imaginations every time. You're the best, man. Cheers. Thank you so much. Cheers.